Hi there, this is Vivzir. In this video, I will show you how to use the break statement in Java using IntelliJ. Let's say that you have to browse through a hundred numbers. The way you do that is with a for loop. Now I can enter a for loop with a shortcut by saying for i and hit return or enter on your keyboard and that creates a for loop. I go from i is 0 to i is 100. Now let's say you want to find out all those numbers that are divisible by 3. If you remember, you will use the modulus operator to test if a number is divisible or not. So 3 modulus 3 is basically 3 divided by 3 and the remainder which is going to be 0. 4 modulus 3 will give you 1, 5 modulus 3 will give you 2 and 6 modulus 3 will once again give you 0. So if we take a number which is i. And if we take its modulus with 3, if the answer is going to be 0, that means this number is perfectly divisible by 3. So we can add a system.out.println saying i to indicate that number is divisible. Let's run the program and find out. So there you go, it prints a table roughly of all the numbers that are divisible by 3 starting at 0 and it goes all the way up to 99. Now what if I told you that I want only the first 6 numbers that are divisible by 3. How would you do that? So in that case, you will go up at the top and let's count the number of times we find a number that is divisible by 3. Now you and I know very well that if i% 3 equals equals 0, that means a number is divisible by 3. So let's give a variable here called count and increase it by 1 every time we find a number and I will initialize this variable count to 0. Now at the end of everything you can just print count and see what is the total number of those numbers that are divisible by 3. Click run at the top and at the bottom you can notice that count is 34. In simple words we found 34 numbers that are divisible by 3. Now I want the first say 6 numbers that are divisible by 3 and after that I don't want to run this for loop anymore. To do that I can simply use an if condition over here right below this by saying if count equals equals 6 then we need to exit the for loop that means I can call break over here. Now let's run this and find out if this works. Take a look at that. We find 0, 3, 6, 9, 12, 15 and then there is the count here that indicates that only 6 numbers were found and it did not process the for loop any further. So this is the use of a break statement in a real example. So let's take a look at the final use of break which is called a labeled break in this section. So I have two for loops here, the outer one that goes from 0 to 3 and the inner one that also goes from 0 to 3 and they both print the values of i and j. Notice that I have used print for the first one so that i is printed and then j is printed on the same line followed by a new line after which i will be printed on the next line. So if you run the program you will see 0 0 where i is the first value and j is the second value. So it goes 0 0 0 1 0 2 1 0 1 1 1 2 and so on. Now what if I wanted to prematurely exit this loop? Let's test some ideas here. So I go to the inner for loop here and I just write a condition saying if j a equals a equals 1 then I want to break. So I'll just say break here. Let's run the program and find out what this is supposed to do. So initially i is 0 and j is 0 that's fine. i is still 0, j becomes 1 that's fine but remember that after that executes Right here we have the condition saying if j is 1, break. This means this inner for loop is not going to run anymore until i resets. Now i becomes 1 as you can see and therefore it prints i is 1, it prints j is 0, then it goes and prints i equals to 1 and it prints j equals to 1 and this condition becomes true where j equals to 1. So once again the for loop is terminated and i increments and becomes 2. Now 2 less than 3 is true, right? So this for loop is going to execute where it prints i that is 2 and 0, it prints 2 and 1 and then this condition becomes true where the for loop 
inside is again terminated now what happens if i say i equals equals one and try to break on that point let's run the code and find out so this time i is zero initially the loop will run for j is zero the loop will run for j is one the loop will also run for j equals to 2 which you can see here in the output now the moment i becomes 1 this loop will run the first time it will print the value of i which is 1 as you can see here and print the value of j which is 0 but at this point this if statement will be activated and the loop inside will not run anymore but notice one thing the break statement is only ending this inner loop. It doesn't do anything to the outer for loop that we have. And that is exactly what a labeled break will do. Now you can give a label here, call it waves if you want. Just put a colon and you can say break waves. Now let's try to run the code and see what happens. If I click run now, take a look at that. The outer for loop also terminates. Same thing i is initially 0, j is 0, this print statement would work, then i stays the same, j becomes 1, that's fine, j becomes 2, that's fine, i gets incremented to 1, this inner for loop starts, it prints the value of i as 1, it prints the value of j as 0, but then this condition is executed and it break waves means it exits the outer for loop completely and therefore nothing happens after that. So this is called a labeled break in Java. Hopefully you guys have understood something about the break statement in this video. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video. Have a nice day.